You guys, I'm super excited right now. Uh, welcome to everyone that's joining. Um, didn't get any sleep last night. Kept imagining this in my head over and over, which is normal for me. I'm a psychopath. Uh, but for those who are tuning in and, and those who are watching later, we have a very special guest today. Um, it's really exciting for me, and I hope it's really exciting for you, too. Um, let me see here. Where is my little... There we go. Let's introduce and bring to you Lucio P Parillo. I, I think that's out. <laughs> Uh-oh. The screen's black. Hang on. There you go. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, okay, I hear you. you. I... Okay. I can't see you very well, but okay. I, I think I hear you. You can't see my picture? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I, I see, I see, <laughs> but but I, I can't see you. It's, it's like one frame. Well, it's okay, I hear you. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm frozen, it's I'm frozen. Okay, I get what you're saying, it's fro uh, frozen. Okay, well, I, I think, Lucio, thank you so much for doing yeah, this. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Uh, if anyone didn't know, Lucio's in uh, Italy, right? You're in Italy? Yeah, 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 sure. I'm in Italy. And thank okay. you for uh, for uh, this interview. <laughs> of course, man. This is uh, really special to me. Now, I do have a lot of questions and stuff like this, but I wanted to um, kind of just tell everyone why I'm so excited. Um when, you know, when I was younger, I was into comics, and I got out of comics. I was into the stories and the, the comic-y art. And, uh, you know, I got into sports and stuff like that. And, I you know, I went to Europe, and I went to Rome, and I went to the Vatican, and I went to the Louvre, and I went to, uh, you know, all over the place and saw all the fine art and the masterworks and stuff like that. And um, when I got back, I had a different appreciation for art. So this, my secret really is that uh, although I do like the stories and comic books, I'm an art fan. So when I see Lucio's work, I relate it to Italy and 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 the the incredible masterpieces that are in the museums and stuff like that. So uh, to me, this is a very big uh, thing because I appreciate art. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm just, I'm super excited to have you here. <laughs> so I don't know how far the lag. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very glad to be here. <laughs> so there are, you have a lot of fans. And yes, someone in the chat said, I'm a fanboy. I am a fanboy. Um, there's just a little bit of a delay so that my questions will be answered a couple seconds later, which is fine. It's across the country or er, world. So. Um, I, I wanted to ask, th there's so many questions I have to ask, and I think I'm going to start with, um, of course, the basic, like, when you were younger, did you know you had this, this talent, of course, I believe your father was an artist, um, so maybe you learned a little bit from him, what was the transition, where did, I, I, I am sorry, but I can't hear you, I, I think we, I need to, Okay, I, I hear very well, very bad. So I, I think it's better if I turn off and turn on again. So I'll okay, do it again because uh, uh, maybe it's not take those off. Well. So just okay. give me two seconds. Okay. I will uh, restart. Okay? Yeah. O okay. Hello? <laughs> we'll get it fixed, guys. Don't worry. This is happening. Thank you, Pope. I think it's the earbuds. That's what I think it is. Right, Comic Joel? Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, right. All right, let's try this again. Okay, how okay, about now? I'm here again. Okay, lo looks better. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me better? C can you hear me better? Mm, not, not that great. I, I wonder if it's your ear earbuds, because oh, before... Let, let's try, let's try. <laughs> oh, you ready? You can hear me. <laughs> Yeah, before when we tried, it was, was working well. Yeah, I think it's probably there here, but I, I, can, I can try to turn it off. Yeah. Can we try? Yes, I'm, do I'm that. Sorry again. It's okay. Go ahead. It worked okay. the best the Give me first time. Seconds. Sorry, guys. Okay, sorry all right. Yeah, it's the AirPods for sure, because we talked earlier, and it was perfect, and it was just normal. <laughs> right, Comic Joel? Oh, Comic Joel. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to pry deep into his brain, and we're going to get all the good stuff out. It could be my speaking, but... I. Uh, Everything was fine earlier for sure when we tested it. No worries. It's giving me time to get all my well, jitters out. I don't know why I'm so nervous. I've interviewed so many people before. Um, let's see. Okay. Can you hear me yeah. now? Yeah. Can okay. you hear me? So what, what's the hear? What's yeah. The hear okay. So but you can hear me fine. Yeah, perfect. Now it's perfect. It's I, I see perfect. that you have all my pictures behind you. I, you can send those anytime. <laughs> so let, let's start over again. So again, thank you so much. I love your work. I'm very excited. When when I look at your work, I think master. I think instant, you know, uh, master artist. I don't know if you put yourself in that category or not. No, but, I'm not. But thank you very much. For <laughs> well, yeah, that's what that's what you think. But uh, you know, in my eyes, from what I've seen in Europe and around the world, that's it. So. Um, I'd like to kind of start with asking you a whole bunch of questions and, and, you know, everyone wants to know about your life and stuff like that. And um, I, I'd like to ask, you know, I know you're a comic book fan and that's why you do comic book art. And, and to me, it's a, it's amazing because we're very lucky that you are a comic book fan to do this art <laughs> because I think your art is museum stuff. You know, I, it's, we're, we're we're extremely lucky. So, um, you your training and stuff like that. I know your father was an artist. Is that correct? Yes, my father is is still an artist. He do uh, sculptures and uh, the church windows. So the the so and uh, he's also a painter. So he was like my first uh, teacher when I was a kid. So I grew up uh, uh, looking him. Uh, painting and drawing, so I was very, very uh, excited every time uh, to uh, watch my father drawing and uh, make me angry because uh, I, I couldn't draw <laughs> because I was a little kid and uh, looking at him uh, doing these realistic uh, artworks because he's, he's a very uh, realistic uh, painter. And so uh, this, this sensation gave me more uh, the... the, the Push me to do to start drawing and doing better. So that was my my, my beginning. And he was also my, my teacher in, in school because he, he was uh, uh, for many years he he's, he was teaching at the art school. And uh, when I was about 13, 14, uh, I had my father as a teacher in the school at, at home. So I was uh, pretty lucky compared to the other students because. Uh, I was uh, with the teacher 24 hours in, at home. And uh, he's, he's also like a surrealist and a realistic uh, painter. Uh, so he was the first, guy, the first one that introduced me, uh, artist, uh, master artist like Frank Frazetta, Boris mm -hmm. Vallejo. So I remember I was a little kid, uh, starting uh, with, with the beginning of uh, drawing art and studying. 
and uh, he showed me this uh, amazing art from Boris Valerio, Frank Frazetta, and uh, so I was amazed uh, from this uh, master artist. Also, he he had like a huge collection of uh, uh, books of the, the master artists from the, the old centuries, uh, like Caravaggio, like the, especially the, the, the Renaissance and the, the Italian artists, mm -hmm. uh, like Michelangelo Caravaggio, Leonardo da Vinci, and uh, going on, all, all the, like, like Velasquez. So I, I grew up in this environment. Um, so my, my real passion is the, as you said before, my real passion is the uh, old master style painters. I can painting. see it. Yeah, so I, I like going to museums uh, very often. Like every, every month I go like three times in the museums, many more studying the same paintings, uh, the old masters to uh, catch the, 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 the brush stroke, the technique. So I think that's very interesting because it, my eyes opened when I went to Europe. Like for a lot of people in America, they don't travel a lot or they don't get to go to Europe or Italy. They don't understand. Hey, once you go, your your mindset changes, especially when you're seeing all the art and the way the world is outside of America. So in, in regard to your art, um, in Europe, you can get uh, extremely close to the work. Like you, it's right there. Like you know, as it's right behind you, and 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 the museums and stuff out there, you can see like the paint coming off the canvas. I mean, I mean, like a quarter, half an inch. I mean, it's amazing. Um, so, you, I, I guess what I'm saying is, so you you didn't notice a talent in yourself when you were young. It was taught. You had to teach yourself. It didn't just come naturally. No, no, no. Uh, no I, I was. Uh, I started with just black and white ink and pencil. Uh -huh. So I just was drawing pencil and ink because I was uh, in my dream. I wanted to become a comic artist. Yes. And and not not a painter because uh -huh. I was looking at my father and uh, looking at him was so hard and difficult to to try to paint with oil. So it was easier for me to just draw pencil and ink. So I said, I want to become a comic artist. Then when I was, uh, so I, I never used colors. I just did like graffiti around the, the city, like, uh, um, you know, graffiti with the spray. Yes. Right. Okay. So I was like, you were, uh, you were a tagger. Exactly. Yeah. More like, uh, and walls and as a, more like a, a street, uh, street art. Mm -hmm. uh, then when I was 20, 21, I discovered the first time I discovered uh, like the, the real uh, technique, like the acrylic and not oil, but acrylic technique. Mm -hmm. And then I, it was like a train uh, in, in, my, in my face because uh, I, I, I realized that uh, I can create three dimensional uh, uh, characters and not just black and white two dimensional. No? You created but, life into the art. You, you could... Yeah, I discovered the three dimensionality, the world. Like uh, I can, I, I discovered that I can create a three dimensional world with colors and light and shadows, and not just the black and white uh, drawing. So I started uh, studying. It was very very hard because it's all, all the the real traditional techniques are very hard. So I studied for years, and I keep keep studying right now. So I, I I never stop because uh, I feel uh, I'm. Uh, I'm not yet 100% uh, uh, how I would like to be. So my, my, my goal, my uh, top, uh, uh, how do you say, target is like the, the, the old master painters that you, you see in, in the museums. And it's so far away. So I feel I have to climb a huge mountain to, to reach this level. Okay. So I feel like uh, I feel like I'm just a kid playing with uh, with brush. Well, that's uh, good. Compared that's with good. the masters, I mean, it's good in a way that you still feel that way. You know, you're still you have that hunger to keep striving and learning and getting better and better. But um, I, I think it's so interesting when you say you're striving to be like these masters, and when I look at it, I see it. Um, I, I don't know if that's just because you might be very hard on yourself in regard to 
what you do and you're like happy or unhappy with your work. I find that very common in artists. They don't like their work or they like it or they don't. Yeah, yeah. But uh, when, when I see yours, I, I, I see museum. I, I, Thank you. Thank you very so, much. Uh, you know, I, 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 you, I, I, I'm very happy about that. I'm happy to listen to, to when someone tell me that it's a, it's a satisfaction because uh, I try to uh, put my uh, what where I studied for years, so the the old master technique, so oil uh, painting, into the comic industry because it's my job, it's my work, and uh, I'm proud about uh, being a comic artist. So I try to use these techniques. Uh, in, into the into my work, uh, but I I really feel that uh, uh, <laughs> I, I can I can I can I know I can do better, but you know sometimes this industry you can compare the uh, the actual situation the uh, with the, the old master uh, situation because uh, like I, I imagine right. that uh, the the old artists they had like probably uh, three four months for do one painting yes. And we have three days yeah. because uh, we have deadlines. We have an art director that uh, email you and say, OK, tomorrow I want the, the cover. So hurry up. So I have to sketch very quick. I don't have the time to find the models. I don't have, to have the, the time to find the, the right pose, light shadows, uh, or someone posing for me. And uh, I have to book or to go really fast and try to put all together in three days, four days, and then take a picture and scan. <laughs> so it's, it's different. So it's, it's, it's always uh, much harder uh, than uh, maybe normal painter that paints for himself and have like a month for one painting. So he can take time and find the pose, find the model, and maybe spend more time on little brush strokes and uh, take all the details perfecting it yeah right. yeah I, I can completely understand that a, a long time ago i dated a, a girl that uh, her dad was a very good artist and he in his garage he had these masterpieces that would go into churches but he would take uh months and months yes. on one piece and i think that that might be that what i completely understand what you're saying you have deadlines in the industry and you've got to really really push them out and of course, that uh, it stops you from really yeah, yeah. seeing how far you can go. Right. I would be extremely interested to see your work that's not comic related. Like, I want to see what you work on that doesn't have anything to do with the comic industry. Yeah. Because, like, I feel like that's your final outlet. That will be your like master work, whatever. Even if you're trying different things or something like that. I mean, you've perfected Vampirilla and Deja Thoris, Ritsonian, you know, all the different characters. And, and what I'd like to say about that is what, what differentiates you from there's a couple things there's the darkness, which I think. I, I almost want to say, like, maybe it has to do with your childhood. Maybe that's where it comes from. But I feel like it might be the inspirations around you. Like, you you were drawn to a certain type of painter or art that you saw in a museum or somewhere. Yes. And you just, like, that's it. That's me. That's what yeah, I want. Right. Exactly. Like, you know, like, um, I think that even the, the old master... Uh, in, in the past centuries, like William Bouguereau or uh, Cicely or uh, Caravaggio or, uh, or, or all the all the masters like Velasquez, uh, they they was working or they were working or they was working they was, were, <laughs> they was working for clients. Yeah. And at that time, the the, the, the client uh, was the church. Yes. So like like for us today, we have uh, I, I know I work for Marvel Comics, DC mm -hmm. Comics, Dynamite. So. That's my, my clients. They asked me to do this character and they must do that. So I would like to do something different. But they say, okay, uh, today for next <laughs> week, I ask you uh, this pose, this character, uh, maybe, I don't know, Batman jumping from a building. Okay, I have to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's my work. And uh, at that time, I think it was probably the same thing because the, the, the Pope or the, the, the cardinal asks to the painter, okay, I want uh, uh, this uh, biblical, bi bi biblical, biblical, biblical um, uh, 
you have to paint this. So yeah, it's the, maybe the creation or the you oh, know, okay, exactly, exactly. So, or... Yeah. So even if they didn't like so much, but they have to do because this is work. <laughs> yeah. The, so we have uh, this kind of the same technique, but uh, they had a long time to do that yeah. because they were they, this they, they had like months and years to do like one big painting. We had a few days, but uh, same techniques. And uh, but the, the, the thing is, when I see the real work of this this artist that passed uh, from the past centuries, uh, you see that they, they used to do different things. So I remember there is a, a, an amazing artist. Uh, his name is uh, uh, um, oh, one second. <laughs> I just forgot his name. Uh, Riccardo Falero. This guy is a painter from 1800. So Luis Riccardo Falero, you can check online. So he used to paint uh, a kind of fantasy art. Uh -huh. I think I think probably he's the uh, the first fantasy artist uh, in the centuries because uh, I'm sure he wasn't working for the church because he loved drawing and painting uh, uh, kind of vampires and uh, witches and uh, demons flying uh, in the sky with the moon. was uh, very, very into the fantasy art. And he probably didn't know that because it doesn't exist the fantasy art at the time. So because the, all, the, all the, the other artists was working just for church or portrait. Uh, yes, exactly, this guy. So if you see this subject, I'm sure you, it was not for a church and probably for a private client or probably he was just painting for himself. So he was in his studio and this guy is not famous because he's not in the, in the art books, uh, but he's really, really a great artist. And I can see uh, something that reminds me uh, our uh, uh, kind Your of style. style that of our century, like uh, let's say subjects that I saw in uh, Boris Vallejo paintings or Frazetta or even in D&D uh, uh, &D or Magic the Gathering uh, stuff, no, you see. And uh, if you take his painting, he could be uh, like one of uh, our contemporary artists uh, right now. But mm -hmm. he painted these things in the 1800s. Yeah, so it's incredible. Uh, so that's I, now I, I understand after that, I understand that uh, even probably William Bouguereau that painted these soft things with angels and uh, uh, stuff, he probably for himself, he would have done different things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what, because we, uh, he always worked for uh, clients, big clients like that, but probably he was another guy that probably he, he could have invented like a new style, like surrealism mm -hmm. or something like that. So uh, it's funny to, to, to compare all these things. Well, that's a, like I was saying, I think it's interesting. Like in the, when I went to, you know, Rome or whatever, and I saw the paintings, they're gigantic. And, you know, they take an extreme amount of time. But, you know, the very the angel and the battles and the, um, I see that in your style, but you've chosen the darker route. You like the dark, in my mind, you yeah. like the darker colors and you like to bring, this is just my uh, perspective of your art. So whether I'm right or wrong, but you like to take the light out of the darkness and show that there's light there. Um, you know, you're, you're very good with lighting and colors and stuff like that. But what also I noticed is I've, I guess my favorite stuff is your Vampirilla stuff, of course, but, you know, the beautiful women. But there's something about their expression or their movement or the little subtleties that are seductive. Um, I'm sorry, Connie. There, can you turn the volume just a little down, Lucio? Yes. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, the echoes. It's a, sorry, Connie. Um, so you know, but when I see the art, your art, and every piece is different. I mean, there's very there's a lot of similarities, but like as you can see behind you, but the different. It's like she's calling or she's feeling something. Um, 
like she's calling you here or she's experiencing a pleasure or you know you yeah. i can get that from your paintings and it really brings her to life out of that darkness that's how i yeah, look at know, the, the, these things is because uh, i was inspired a lot from caravaggio and from the the artist of 1600 so like mattia preti was another amazing artist and the, the age uh, of caravaggio and uh, he was born uh, uh, in the same place where I was born. So he, he moved to Malta and he, 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 he works for years in Malta. So if you go to Malta Island, uh, there is a huge, huge uh, collection of uh, Mattia Preti in the churches, in the, in the museums, uh, and, uh, and Caravaggio as well, because Caravaggio also was living in Malta. So when I, when I was studying uh, art history, I was very impressed by the light and shadows uh, from Caravaggio, Mattia Preti, and uh, this uh, part of the art history. Uh, just because they are more uh, the theatrally, the uh, like a theater light and shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry for my English, it's uh, no, no. I'm really really with English. <clears throat> so, uh, to make an example, like uh, something like this that come out from the, from the shadows, uh, of, of my opinion, is more three dimensional. And there is more to discover in the in the dark, more than uh, having a painting all with strong light, where you see everything exactly. Uh, you see everything, all little details, but uh, you don't participate into it. So if I show you, let's say, let, let's say when you watch a movie and you see like a, a, a comedy, like a TV show, TV comedy with the, all the light open. You see everything, and kind of you get bored because you see too much. No, it's too easy. If if you see a movie like horror movie or a thriller, and you see just half face because the other face is in the shadow, and you don't see part of the body, and behind there is dark, it's kind of like uh, that you get interested more because you it, you see yeah. it, you want to discover what, what's going on. No? Yeah, it draws so that's you. That's the feeling. That I, feeling. As a, that's the feeling that when I see a painting from Caravaggio, I see like the in the shadows i have to get close and try to understand what there is in the shadows mm -hmm. so there is just a few brush strokes that suggest me that there is like a face maybe or uh -huh. maybe not or maybe a bat or a vampire or whatever it is <laughs> and uh, so it's more um, that you participate and you try to uh, jump into the painting and uh, discover something like like swimming under the water now you know you do snorkeling or you do you swim underwater and uh, Everything in the rocks. Everything there is. There is dark. There is uh, maybe some uh, something that can can uh, uh, come out. Some fish or some uh, octopus. Yeah, so stuff. scary. Yeah, and and it's a little bit scary, but uh, it gives you like the the, the, the emotion that you want to swim more and go search for something under well, the, yeah, the rocks. That's the seat. That's why I categorize you as a master because. The, um, for all, multiple reasons, that's one of them, though, because it your your art draws you in. You know, you look everywhere. You you, you know, st you, some lighting will take you somewhere. There's only a couple artists that I know that are in, I consider in your range that are in the comic industry, and and when I get to talk to them, I get very excited. But you know, you're able to create emotion. You you know, let the people want to see more look oh wow look at that and then it takes them somewhere else and they're looking there and they're looking there which spends time with your work you want people to spend time with your work yeah. i have a real quick question or I have more but i'm sorry i hope you have some time but sure. uh, the book you're holding there i recently did i do um information on new books coming out and stuff and i did see that on the final order cutoff this week yeah. that is the i believe it's two hundred dollars now it there's a, or I think that's the remark edition. Now I had a question about that. That's the same art book where you do remark in there. Yeah, this one is uh, the dynamite art. It's all all my art that I did for dynamite. Yeah, it's coming out now. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's now it's uh, online on uh, Amazon. And uh, all the other bookstores that and the retailers. So, yeah, so the comic book stores they can order this book, okay? And, sure. and yeah. what I read was you're doing. There are some that you sign and you do the remark inside. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I can do it, but uh, probably uh, at the next uh, convention when, uh, when the, the, we, we will be able to, to travel around. Because uh, uh, if, uh, you know, imagine if uh, everybody sent me the copy of the book for having a remark is going to be a lot. So no, no. Really... What I was saying is there's an option that you can get it when you're ordering it like you maybe already pre-did remarks and some of them or no 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 no, no you, you you can have i think uh dynamite if mm -hmm. i'm not wrong uh they have inside like uh one um extra paper with my remark that's an option if yeah. i'm not wrong so you yeah. can buy the one with the drawing inside it's an original uh drawing is it yeah that's what i would remark on a, on a different paper but if you want uh, something like uh, like this, yeah, right there, that's on, on the book, and I have to do it. Uh, I can do maybe, but uh, you know, some retailer probably has to buy I don't know like fifty copies and, and ship to me all fifty copies. No, and I, I can ship back when I have the market because uh, if uh, every single uh, uh, guy buy a book and send it to me. I have to, to ship back to every no. single place. It's going to be like a crazy... <laughs> I'm sure. So the inside of that one, you have remarked. Now, I, I know that you... that would, would that be one of the... Okay, so again, Dynamite's offering the remarked editions, which are already yeah. remarked. Yeah. So is that an example of what it would be like? No, no, no. Uh, the one uh, uh, that uh, you can buy with the, with the extra paper inside is... Uh, uh, it's another option. So I did uh, uh, all the remarks before. Then I sent, I ship it to Dynamite, and they will uh, put like an insert. Sure. So how big are they? What size are they? Are they that about that size? Are they a little smaller or? No, uh, it's it's the same size of this uh, of the book. So it, it's going to be like a paper in, into the book. They, they, it's, it's like a yeah, but the, the image itself when you open it up and you show the little remark you did on there, uh, on yeah, the yeah, it's probably this size. Oh, that's amazing. The, the, drawing, the drawing is is about this size. Yeah, so that's because I want. I was curious because I'm going to order one um, oh, because okay. I, I I mean I think it's a great deal. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's really reasonably priced, and I'm like, hey, I can get a, red, a little remark in there and sign. So I'm yes. I'm definitely getting that. That book's beautiful. It's yeah, I, have to, I have to say, I have to say that I I, I just received uh, like this copy, and uh, it's an incredible, incredible, uh, uh, perfect uh, in, from all the point of view. Like the print is perfect, and uh, the quality of the paper and uh, everything. And, and there are so many uh, pictures inside that I don't even remember that I did <laughs> so much copies because uh, yeah. There's a lot. What is it like? Two hundred pages or something? I don't know, but there are so much, and uh, in, there is some uh, illustration, some cover that I did uh, probably more than ten years ago that uh, I, I forgot about. So when I see, and I see here, I said, "Oh, <laughs> this one I, I don't even remember anymore." Uh, this, this cover. So very, very old, old covers that I did for Dynamite, and uh, uh, from the first one until the the, the last uh, cover of the Red Sonia from of the this year, the Jotoris and Red Sonia. Um, few sketches also inside, few uh, sketchbooks. No, sketchbooks, uh, yeah, sketches. So it's really the, an amazing book. Uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Covers, it's, all, it's, really good. it's all dynamite work, correct? Yeah, all, only dynamite covers. Yeah. yeah. I think it's amazing. Dynamite has been very. They're just so smart in regard to the artists they have. I mean, you know, I, of course, you're my favorite over there, but you have, you know, Ben Oliver and you have Hetrick and these guys, and they're just amazing. Uh, it's all different styles, and but, you know, you're to me, you're the one that brings them to light. I recently saw, and I want to bring Joel in here in a minute, if that's okay, because he just got one of your originals, but I recently saw you doing the work to your left, I believe, the one where she's... The moon. She's uh, like, okay. This yeah, one. I mean, man, that is serious business. That piece, man. It um, yeah, it's this like it's drunk on her. The it's like she's what I see in there is like 
almost like she's on a high or she's completely <laughs> drunk, like just enjoying every last. It's so crazy. I love it, man. It <laughs> really, it brings something out in me. I don't know what it is. It's uh, it's very seductive, and it, it's. I mean, all your pieces are, but that I saw you recently doing that. Yeah, it's a. Uh, this is an oil painting on board, so it's a uh, wood board. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, so, so that's very hard. Uh, that's uh, kind of what you sent Joel. I guess that'd be a perfect time to bring him in to ask some questions about his piece because I know he has it there. Uh, so what, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to bring him in. Um, yeah, sure. So this one is also another one that. Ah, hi. How are Hello. You? <laughs> hey, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Also, thank you so much for the painting. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm very glad because uh, I know it's in a good hand. <laughs> so I, we think, you know, Joel and I were talking about this, Lucio, and this painting that he has is, in essence, different. Um, because of her, it even seems more like museum piece, like her outfit, her, her black, whatever it is. Um, you know, it's not the classic, you know, almost completely naked Vampirella. It's, and she's got this incredible smile on her face. And it's, it's diff. I think it, honestly, I think it's different. I don't know, Joe, what do you think? Yeah, well, for, when I saw this, uh, this one really stood out to me because it's so like the pose and the, especially the costume is so much different from the other Vampirella covers that I'd seen. Um, and I was just wondering if there was any special inspiration for this one, uh, just because of the way it looks, it's so different. Yeah, you know, like, uh, I like changing sometimes because uh, uh, I love Vampirella because it's one of my favorite characters, as well as Red Sonia. And, uh, but the point is that, of course, you have to do the same costume every, every, for every cover, right? Because that, that's, the, uh, that's, that's her character, huh? And But sometimes I like to change a little bit, and uh, I was inspired a little bit by um, the 1800... Uh, uh, museum uh, uh, painting where they used to have this kind of costume and uh, so I, I was thinking that uh, would have been nice to do like a Vampirella dressing uh, like uh, 1800 style uh, uh, dress and uh, so I, I showed that to the art director and he said oh yeah that's fine you can do it and uh, so I tried to mix a little bit of uh, old style like um, uh, Queen, uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't know in English, but uh, like the old style, like 1800 style with the modern uh, Vampirella uh, classic, and uh, so I was just a, you know, like a, you can see, you can understand it's Vampirella because of the the logo, the symbol on, on the, yeah. the hair on a, on a belt. Uh, and by the hair, but uh, uh, could be like uh, someone else in, in, in the past history. No, in, uh, so do you get like a live model to, to wear something like that to then use as reference? Or uh, I usually don't use one reference uh, because I like mixing uh, part of different, uh, like uh, let's say I see maybe like a nice uh, smile uh, uh, of a, a picture, and then uh, I like uh, to to mix with something else. So I don't I don't just take a picture and copy exactly 100, percent but uh, I usually take different pictures, like I take 10 pictures of uh, the same model or different models, or and then or maybe I search something online or and then I see okay this one is, is the perfect smile and this one has the perfect hair and this one is that good hand that holding the glass and then, then the, the dress is maybe from another uh, picture oh, and, and then I, I create with my mind so it, it's like mixing many things together because it's it, it's impossible to have like the perfect picture that I just have to copy in, in such a short time because uh, i usually have very very short time to do my course so usually three days four days uh, because i have uh, um, every week about two or three covers 
and uh, so yeah, I'm always like in, in in a rush, always running uh, and try to finish my my covers. I think that's a shame, to be honest with you. I yeah, think... I, I, I wish to have uh, more time. Yeah, <laughs> but that, that's fine. Like uh, that, that's my work. I, I, it's, it's an industry, so. Do you have anything, just curious, do you have anything that's not, that's something that we haven't seen, like you're experimenting with or that we could see, like, you know, not Vampirilla, not Hulk, not Spider-Man, not Marvel DC, do you have these uh, experiments? Yeah, I have, a, okay, right now here I don't, because right now I'm not in my, in my town, because uh, usually I, I live in Florence, and in Florence, I have my own uh, art gallery in the center of Florence. So it's my studio and art gallery and, oh. uh, where I display and I, I do exhibitions of uh, my personal work. And sometimes also I invite other artists to join the, the exhibitions. So I, I organize workshop. I invite artists from USA, from other country. We do workshop, we do exhibitions and I have my personal uh, uh, exhibition permanent so all the year all year and uh, in my studio in florence i have my also my personal art so sometimes it's like a portrait or sometimes like just like a still life or maybe something more surrealistic uh, things but not here at the moment because uh, at the moment i'm not in florence because of the covid uh, mm -hmm. so we just uh, uh, move a little bit for, for for a short time from waiting for for the situation to get better so we are not in, in florence so but maybe next time when I will be in Florence, we can do another live and then we'll show you something. Oh, that would be incredible. So do you live in Florence then nor most of the time? Yeah, I, I live in Florence. It's, it's my uh, base, like in my city. Then from Florence, I travel around the world for work and for the pleasure of working, of traveling because I like uh, being... Uh, I, I don't like staying in the same place for a long time. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, because of conventions, I go often to to USA. So in the past years, I've been there like almost every month, going back and forth. And um, sometimes I go to the other part of the world. So I go to Indonesia and stay like two, three months uh, and other countries. So I like traveling a lot. And But every time I, I go back to Florence, I stay like uh, uh, the time that I have to stay and then travel again. So this is the first time, the first year, I'm stuck here <laughs> in one place for a long time. Usually, I never stay more than one or two months in the same city. It's got to be incredible to be able to. Live. I mean, I loved Italy. Florence was, of course, incredible. Their ice cream was really good too. <laughs> but yeah. uh, that's the world, the best for ice cream, I think. So, or was it pistachio or something? But uh, the uh, statue of David. There's you're surrounded by so many things there. It's got to yes. be amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a museum. Florence is an open museum. Everywhere you go, you see sculpture, you see paintings. Even if you go to a church, just for uh, see what there is inside, you, you find uh, amazing paintings uh, yeah. on the wall. And uh, I discovered uh, one of the greatest artists of the history in church, in a small, small church, that usually there are no tourists. Nobody go in this church because it's not uh, advertised. And uh, I just walk in and I saw this amazing painting from uh, Antonio Cicero. Uh, he was like an 1800 uh, uh, master artist. And this painting is just amazing. It's incredible. It's one of the best paintings of the art history. So if you just walk into the, the, into the church or you just go around the corner, you see like a little sculpture, a little painting. It's amazing. Florence yeah, is amazing. That, as well as Paris. Paris is another. Yeah, that, that's what. So that's why I said when I went to Europe, it changed the way I looked on the world because it's it's old history, and it's built into the, the uh, architecture and the everywhere. It's everywhere. It, you, yeah. you can't hide from art and buildings and everything's so beautiful there so uh, you know i'm just i'm so excited to have you lucio i really am i mean this is a for me this is again i love comic books but art is my thing uh, you know it, i love art the most and being able to inter interview someone like yourself that i believe will be remembered forever um your stuff is is something real special for me um i'm just 
what what's your plan like what's your, what do you see for yourself in the future what is your dream yeah what's okay. your past this okay okay uh i have a few different uh dreams and uh, or uh, i don't want to say dreams but i, I think uh, goals like uh, targets so one of the uh, one of my goal uh, is uh, uh, one day to have uh, one of my uh, story and uh, that I, I wrote a story and oh. some sketches and uh, I finished huh? stop <laughs> someone making fun stop. of you <laughs> I have to concentrate that my English is really bad so if I don't concentrate uh, that's I, okay, I, I can... okay. <laughs> so um, I, I did. I wrote this story, and I did. I did the sketches, and uh, I created characters and stuff. And uh, uh, would be great one day to have uh, 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 this uh, this story and this character uh, as a movie, like a three D a three D movie one day, because uh, would be like a, an amazing movie or around the, around the theaters. So this is one of my targets. So maybe one day, uh, the, my dream is to go to the movie theater to watch my own uh, movie like a, like a cartoon like a disney cartoon or something like that but with my own uh, story uh -huh. so maybe i don't know if someone is listening and he want to produce my <laughs> you don't know joel he does uh he actually does some movie stuff he's a film critic oh, wow. and so there you go you can well, trade only short films right now <laughs> yeah well you can trade art for, yeah you can trade art for uh getting his movie produced or something <laughs> Uh, and uh, and one of the, uh, another goal is uh, um, I, I love doing comics, so I, I want to keep doing uh, covers until uh, the last day of my life. Really? But at the same time, uh, I would like to uh, create uh, uh, like my own painting mm -hmm. paintings style uh, and to be and leave something in the museums. Mm -hmm. So I know it, it, it's it's a big dream. I mean, uh, it's it's a it's a very very big big uh, far away uh, target. But uh, one of my dream is uh, when I will be dead, I hope that uh, the next generation, the next uh, people, will go to the museum and uh, uh, find uh, one of my painting, my personal painting, hanging on a wall of the of a museum, maybe in Florence or maybe in another city. And uh, I, I don't want to, like, you know, I don't want to be just uh, forgotten by the next uh, generation. So, uh, like, like right now, I go to the museum and see the old masters. Uh, but I think that these guys, when they were 20, 21, 30, uh, they didn't know they would, would have, they, they will have been in the museum in the future, right? So, they were just living their life, painting, working. They say, okay, today you have to work, they have to paint. Mm -hmm. So, they just work for money. And uh, but now they are in the museums, and uh, and now we, we go studying these these guys and see. Oh, look, this one is uh, Leonardo da Vinci. This one is Caravaggio. And uh, so I, I wish my dream is that one day uh, the next generation will go to the museums. Maybe like uh, high school uh, guys, they go say, Oh, this one is a Lucio Perillo painting uh, in that museum. So I, that's a dream. I hope yeah. it will be. I I, I just hope I don't die. And uh, people forget about me. So <laughs> I just hope I, I can Look, leave I, a, a, a can You want to leave a mark. Foot. Yeah. You yeah. want your footprint or whatever. But uh, footprint in the, I, in the history of art. I think that you already, I mean, I, this is my own point of view, but I think you already have. And that's a thing I think a lot of artists battle with is like, oh, I'm not thinking I'm not good. I'm not. And of course, you're surrounded by masters where you live. So it's kind of tough on you. But um, you have left your footprint in the comic book world already and uh even though it's not the museum like you're saying or the art like that your art has gone all over the world through these comics so people are able to experience you know masterwork on a comic it, back you know in the 1800s and the whatever there was just one you know you had to go to the museum to see it we're in a different time that there are thousands, and yeah. everyone can see it. So I think that you have definitely left your mark already. But I, again, I really, I am excited for the day that I can see the other stuff, 
like you said, the stuff you want to leave and put in your museum. I can't wait to see that other where you have more time and you can uh, put your – you already put your heart and soul on everything. It's just a time thing. So where you have more time to just work on that, what you consider yourself, your masterpiece. And I can't wait to see that. So um, – I really appreciate you coming, Lucia. I really do. It's. Uh, I had one quick question. If you yeah. have time. No um, more. Reason, no. <laughs> uh, recently, you did a uh, like a combo cover with Carla Cohen, and I was wondering yeah. what the process was with that. It was for Patriotica. Yes, uh, I can ask her. She's here. So. Uh oh. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi Carla. How are you? Oh my God. So first of all. Uh, hi, Billy, and hi, hi. Joel. Joel. You have the piece I've been asking to Lucho to keep. <laughs> so she, she didn't want oh. me to, to give to you. She said, no, please. Let me <laughs> oh. So I had to fight for that. <laughs> so believe me, you have one of the best piece he did for the last six months, to my mind. Like this piece is with the Red Sonia that you also gave to someone. Uh, <laughs> there is only this word. You're in trouble, um, man. <laughs> those both pieces, I really want them, but I didn't have them. So I'm very lucky you you got it, and uh, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's de definitely one of my favorites that I've uh, of his. <laughs> but I was wondering um, if you would talk just a little bit about the uh, Patriotica cover where you both did uh, like dual projects. Oh, so this is, I'm not calling that so much a jam cover because basically we, we have two different schedules. So and we work separately and then... Yeah, we, we weren't able to do like a real four hands painting for that one because he had the, some cover deadlines. I had some cover deadlines. At the end, we came up saying, okay, we're going to do it, but we're going to do two spread subject and then we, we just like stick them together. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's not a real gem cover. I hope in the next years or in the next month um, to do a... Uh... Okay, so that's... So you, you asked me some personal work, so this is a personal work. Oh uh, my I, I just remember that. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh that's man, that's me. incredible. So you see, you see me smiling, so you don't see the look likeness, but that was a particular moment for me. And he, he gave me that painting for my birthday. Oh my God. So and it's a, it's a painting. And uh, usually I don't do portraits. I, I, I usually uh, like just to do like my, my own stuff. But in that case, uh, I have, what was fun. Like sometimes I have fun doing uh, my, some, some portrait. Another one that I, that I did, uh, I will show you maybe next time is, uh, my aunt, aunt, auntie, auntie uh, it was really fun as well. So it's a, sometimes portrait. That's that's what I do when I when I don't do comics. I didn't have the vampirella, but I got my portrait, which is fair enough. <laughs> Joe, you're in big trouble. You got her. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you guys, I consider you guys like the dynamic duo of art. I mean, you know, I love Carla's work too. Um, it's, there's very, there's a lot of similarities and I'm sure you guys feed off each other. And do you guys both like have one easel over there and one over there and you're both going at the same time or? So at the beginning we were on the same room, but with the quarantine, we're like 24 hours over 24 together. So now I just put me somewhere else. So that way we have a little... You guys so are going crazy been, together. So in, in Florence, in my studio, it, it's, a, it's a very big, big studio. So there is a, a space enough, room enough to, for working and uh, don't even see each other. <laughs> uh, here for the moment, <laughs> he, here for the moment uh, uh, we, we, we are in a smaller place, and, uh, but a different room because... Uh, he got the bigger one. I have the bigger room, of course. <laughs> uh, so uh, we see how the, the situation will be, will be with the COVID and then we go back to, to Florence. But, you know, like uh, even uh, with, uh, with, with my studio in Florence, uh, I love my, my studio, I love my gallery. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's my... Uh, my 
Okay, I, I, I love my studio, but... You're home away from home. Yeah, yeah. but you know, like, uh, working in the same place for a long time, uh, it, it's, it's not good for me. Like, yeah. I need, uh, at one point, after a month, I need to just take a flight, go to another part of the world, where I can have uh, new information, new uh, input, Mm -hmm. and, and, and someone else to see it rather than me. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Guys, I leave you. I leave you. I'll let you continue this. Afternoon. Thank you, Carla. And I'm following in my studio. But uh, yeah, that was nice meeting you. Hi, Joel. And yes. uh, yeah, keep up the great interview. They're very nice. I'm Thank watching it so in my studio, actually. Well, we'll see you later, Carla. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. So, like, for example, uh, I love going to Indonesia. Uh, and because there is uh, an incredible, incredible uh, culture, art, uh, and religion together. Used, yeah. So the, yeah, so the Hindu religion and the, the, the local art in Indonesia is just amazing. Mm -hmm. So going there and see the local artists uh, and see the, the temples and see all the, the sculptures, the, the tradition there, uh, just blow my mind out and uh, I, I kind of uh, I restart my brain and mm -hmm. make me uh, give me the, the feeling of uh, uh, doing more, doing different things and uh, you know like it's kind of energy that I get energy. Uh, the same thing if I, if I go to Paris in, in, in the Louvre or Museo d'Orsay, uh, I get energy no? and say okay now I want to do better, I want to go home and paint, I want to go home. Uh, so I, I can say at the moment we are here since uh, probably how long like five six months so in, in the same play huh? more yeah more maybe more <laughs> so uh, since the the the, the, the COVID, months, yes yeah. and it, it's okay because uh, it's a nice place and I love staying here but uh, in, in the same room for a long time uh, yeah, I think is. It's difficult. Like I, I want to have like more information, more um, input. Yeah, I think we're input. all going through that right now. I think we're all trapped in our own little way. Going, you know, got to get out. But yeah, it's like you said, traveling the world. I mean, when I traveled to Europe, I mean, it opened my mind and it it, it, it awakened me. And it's just the same for you and artists. You want to see new things and you want to experience something different, a different culture, a different art, and it it awakens your creativity you know so have you noticed you know because of being stuck at home uh that your art's getting darker <laughs> uh yeah maybe maybe a little bit i know this one here is the light of it uh yeah. this one was a difference that joel has but like do, are, do you feel like the darkness is coming more and more into your art recently yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, like everything that happens around me uh, is an influence on my on my art, and of course, uh, uh, I'm working on Vampirella, so it's more kind of vampire stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah. if if I uh, if I stay in a place and uh, surrounded by uh, bad news on the TV <laughs> and stuff, of course, I became more uh, dark. Inside. Negative, and yeah. When, when, yeah. So, like th this one, for example, uh, I just finished this one two days ago, and uh, it's not that happy. <laughs> so, I, this one. So it's like uh, a little bit. Uh, I got influenced by probably the 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 environment at the moment. It's still gorgeous, but yeah, you can see her expression. She's just kind of, you can see it in the expression of her, you know, her and, face. Uh, like when I'm in, the, in Indonesia, in Bali, I, I get influenced by the, the, the culture and the art uh, uh, over there. And uh, so if you see the covers that I did uh, when I was in Bali uh, in the past years, uh, there are uh, uh, different subject even if there is a vampirella or that's on it the background and the colors you see are uh, there is something from uh, that reminds you the, the indonesia culture sure that's uh, awesome yeah. i mean that's great that that uh, definitely changes stuff up i did notice something in one of your last pieces i'm not sure what number it was but 
I saw a change in Vampirilla's facial features. Um, I don't know which one it was. But, I mean, they're all they're all different, but I definitely noticed something different. I, I can't remember. That's for, for another time. But uh, he changed girlfriend. Oh yeah, I just you know I wonder like all the the uh, <laughs> all the models coming over. And Carla's like, hey hey hey, calm down. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Like now, we we work with models, of course. So uh, when we are in Florence in the studio, also because you know, like I do, uh, I teach to to students. So when when we do workshops, when we do class, uh, we work. Uh, we, we we I teach anatomy, and uh, we work with real models, like like the academies. Uh, They're not as beautiful as those. Otherwise, they won't have entered in the studio. Uh oh. So. So we, we have models coming uh, to the studio and uh, uh, like, you know, that, 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 that's the rule, like the, the, the students have to study real anatomy. They, they can study, uh, if they want to uh, learn the real anatomy, you need a, a skull and a, a real face to compare and study. So we work with the, with the models uh, every day. And, um, that, that's why I, I, I like to, um, I take pictures and uh, I, I, I don't like just copying, as I said before, uh, from, I, I like to do like a, a hyper realistic copy of a photograph because that's another kind of uh, art style. I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm impressed by the artists that they do this uh, photorealistic uh, style. No? They, they, they do this face super hyper realistic. Uh, but on my opinion, for myself, it's, it's kind of boring because I don't like just the copy exactly like what I have uh, on my side uh, the, uh, of my canvas. But if I have a picture of a model, I like to create with my mind, change things exaggerate something, uh, add my own uh, uh, things, uh, my own style, I, you know, like I'm a, a kind of a creator. I'm not a, just a, a plotter, like a copy. I, I do like just, okay, this is the picture, and then I do the same thing, like, like a printer. Uh, it's it's oh, incredible. Yeah. The, the people that do that, it's, it's incredible. I, I love people that can do exactly like this. I could, like, I mean, if, if you give me a picture, I can copy exactly. It takes mm. a long time, but you do, like, every inch, you just copy. But just it's just boring. I really get really, really bored. So that's why I, I use model, but uh, I like to add 50% uh, of my creativity and my imagination. No, and I get that. I mean, and it's it's not easy, or it's not hard to spot your art. I mean, I can go into a store, I can see a picture, and I can be like, Lucio, 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 you know, or or you know uh delato or brown or you know there's certain people that you can pick bianchi or whatever and but your your style is a hundred percent it's you you know it's whatever it's in there you know uh I, like you, you uh you want to bring the light out of the darkness i think i, I don't know how else to get like some 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 eyes what you're trying to do i really don't know i'm not you what are you trying to do what do you like is that it is that i want you to you get drawn in but see see the good and the bad and the dark or what what exactly is that a hard question to ask i don't know no no it's no, no it's, it's correct like uh, it's um uh, it's you know uh as I said before, I was impressed by the, the old master like Caravaggio, and uh, uh, it, I like the two dimensionality. I like when uh, when I can uh, create something that look, looks real, but doesn't exist. So, for example, for, for me, like uh, uh, painting like a monster, like, let's say like uh, invent and like, create something brand new that doesn't exist. So, like a character design. And make it three dimensional, make it looking real, without any reference, any picture. For me, it's the the best uh, goal and uh, the best satisfaction because um, doing uh, like a character like that, fifty percent is mine, fifty percent is the model. Okay, but if I do something like uh, let's say like an orc, 
no? without any reference, without any model. And at the end, it looks uh, real, three-dimensional, realistic, like real skin, you feel it. That's the best satisfaction. I'm very, I'm more happy. So you're, um, I, I wanted to, you know, I know we've been jumping around and I don't know how much time you have left, but, uh, you know, uh, I just kind of wanted to say you, most, you're more, more self-taught than anything else, right? From, from seeing, going and practicing, learning different techniques from actual visual art, or, I mean, I'm sure you had some schooling, but, uh, the, was the majority you just learning yourself uh yes i so i, I did the school uh, the, the the high school when i was 14 uh, and uh, as i said at the beginning uh, i had my father as a teacher mm -hmm. but then uh, i did the academy of art in rome okay uh, but unfortunately it was like a very bad bad experience because uh, the teacher uh, was a really bad, bad teacher. Uh, the, the, he was supposed to be the, the most important teacher uh, in the company, mm -hmm. but he was like a real uh, stupid person and uh, he was really a bad teacher and uh, uh, zero, really zero uh, skills. skills. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Zero, zero skills. And uh, so I had a very hard time in that, in that period. So I, I was uh, going to the academy and try to learn something. I was really disappointed. And I used to go home, open the book of Frazetta, Boris Vallejo, or uh, uh, Caravaggio, and copying and studying from the books mm -hmm. more than into the academy. Uh, because the, the academy at the time when I, when I was there, uh, they used to teach mod, more like uh, modern art, uh, like uh, abstract or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my opinion, if you want to do abstract or uh, any kind of uh, style, uh, you first have to learn the real art, uh, become a good artist, uh, studying the old master. Then after that, you can create something new, adding your own style to the, uh, to the skills, to, the, to the, what you learn in, in mm -hmm. the years. But you, you can just wake up in the morning and uh, throw some color on a canvas and say, oh, I did the uh, abstract art, <laughs> and, uh, so yeah. you want to buy it? Uh, why? Because it's just, uh, it's just a blue and yellow and uh, some scratch on the canvas. Uh, it, it, so everybody can do that. So you yeah. have skill, you know. And, but unfortunately, in the academy, uh, many academy in Italy, academ academies in Italy, uh, there is this kind of... Uh, uh, for, for years, for many years, there was uh, teachers that they, instead of learning the, the, the style and the techniques, uh, they used to they push the, the, the guys uh, doing this kind of thing, abstract uh, for Do you four think years. It was because of the time you were in schooling, that type of stuff was kind of uh, hot at that time? That, so they were kind of copying what was going on at that time? Uh, yeah, you know, like uh, the, the, in Italy was very uh, hard uh, because uh, in the sixties there was the revolution uh, in the academies. So, uh, not, not, not revolution. The right word is uh, uh, okay. Like there, there was like like a rebuilding. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. So there was this, uh, uh, how you say, like the, the modern kind of... Uh, uh, Marta movement. Movement, exactly, mm. the movement. And uh, what was good for the time, but then these guys, they just uh, occupy the academies. Yes. They say, okay, now I rule here and I'm a teacher. <laughs> and that's uh, for 50 years. That sounds crazy, especially in Italy. <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, yes. And you know what happened? They, they just uh, try to erase the, the good masters. Mm -hmm. So I never, never studied in the academy. I never studied William Bugero. Never. Mm -hmm. uh, they never I never studied uh, the artists from 1700, like uh, uh, 
the, the old masters like Tintoretto, like, they, they don't even talk about that, no? They just stop Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, they, they, there is a huge gap until yeah, the modern think. art, and they yeah, talk about themselves. So they say, okay, now we can talk about me because I'm yeah. the uh, abstract master artist, uh, so <laughs> you have to do what I do. And uh, so we, we were like students, we, we were like 20, 18, 20 years old, and we, we were going to the academy with this man and say, okay, now you take a canvas, take a blue, throw the blue on the canvas. Okay, <laughs> that's all. And they say, okay, can we study anatomy? And they say, no, you don't need that. Because uh, now, because in, in the art galleries, if you want to become famous, uh, you have to do that. And <laughs> so I, I never studied anything about uh, real uh, history, real uh, techniques. So I did everything by myself, just going to the museums on the church and looking at this painting and say, oh, wow, this is incredible. I want to I wanna do that. <laughs> Chloe. Sorry. Yeah, that's got to be very frustrating when you got to, you, know, you know, the first, the basics that, you know, human anatomy is such a tough thing to learn, you know, and they're not even, they're just skipping it. So I think it was probably a time period thing where I got to get my dog to uh, stop barking or I'm going to go crazy. Uh, well, I was going to ask you one other thing about, uh, I got to get my dog. Joel, ask him something. I'll be right back. But have you already gone over? But how did you get into doing uh, comic book covers? Uh, comic book. Uh, um, okay, the first time I, I, when I started, uh, I started with video games. That was the first, uh, uh, the first jobs, video games. And then uh, step by step, I started doing some uh, uh, role play games. Uh, illustrations for uh, D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, and then uh, Magic the Gathering, Warcraft, and then I start working for the comic industry. So for uh, one or two years, uh, I've, I've been working for uh, all these uh, uh, role-play game uh, industry and video games. And then I start doing comics uh, full-time. Okay, that's... that's yeah so, that's, that, yeah. yeah, so that's very interesting, uh, you know, which I didn't know much about, really, was all this, the magic and the card games and stuff. This is where you can really see your stuff, your your uh, your dreams come to life, fictional characters with where you make them real, alive, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was a great experience working for... Uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Magic, uh, because uh, you know, like it's 100% uh, uh, imagination where you have to create something like, like what I just said before, like you have to, you have fun creating something that doesn't exist. But the same thing with the comics at the end, because uh, if you have to do like a Marvel Comics cover, uh, like the Hulk is one of my favorite uh, characters because it's, uh, it's really fun. You have to uh imagine this uh, huge uh, big giant green that uh, you can you, you can't have a model posing for you you just have to use your your mind your imagination your creativity yeah the 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 uh, normal like, like venom the same with venom uh, yeah like where you is, yeah overdo things and make it more not you know muscles where they're not supposed to be muscles and veins and yeah you know So yeah, you guys, you can always I've, in the description of the video, I've put a link to his uh, site or studio or you know dot com, whatever you want to LucioPrioArt dot com. So you can go and you can tour, see some of his uh, covers, and uh, contact him if you're interested in getting a commission. Um, there's so many things you can do here, and of course, enjoy all the art. I mean, look at this. This is. Is it showing? Yeah, or, uh, or buy original art. It's yeah, or buy original work. art. Um, I, I would recommend following uh, the Instagram, too, because you, yeah, he does exactly. a lot of the videos where you can see the progression of the art. Yeah, I saw yeah, him. Instagram, yeah, at the moment, Instagram is, uh, is a good uh, uh, platform uh, where uh, people can follow what I do day by day. So I uh, usually every day I put something on Instagram, like work in progress, uh, uh, 
some video when I'm when I'm painting. Uh, so uh, as Joel, you, you can just uh, uh, go there and see. Maybe you see I just start a new painting. You say oh, I like this one. Maybe uh, you know, like someone can write and say uh, I, I wanna. Uh, make a reservation, kind of a reservation. So at the end, when it's finished, I, I want to maybe uh, get the original art uh, before anybody else. And uh, th that's a good chance for, for, the, for the people, instead of waiting that the painting get published, because usually when I finish painting, until uh, the cover get published, there is probably like a month, something like that. And, uh, but if you check Instagram, and my, my account, you, you see it in real time, uh, day by day, what, what, I'm, what I'm doing. When it's finished, if you like, you just email me and say, okay, what? And I say, no, well, I don't, because <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't have anything, it's all gone. <laughs> so I saw there, it said uh, interest-free payments within reason. I might jump on that. We'll see how much, how much reason I can get for getting one of those originals. But uh, I really appreciate all your time, Lucio. I'm going to I'm going to let you go because I know you have a life and Carla's there looking at you waiting, going, what's going on? And uh, <laughs> Joel, thanks. I'm going to let you go, Joel. Yeah, thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Joel. Joel. So, again, I, you know, thank you so much, Lucia. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. And I look forward to hopefully talking to you in the future when you're experimenting with some new things and we can take a look back and um, – uh, I just, it's been a great pleasure. You are a master, whether you believe it or not. Uh, Thank you very and, much. Uh, that's it. I, I, do you have any, would you, do you, is there anything else you'd like to say? Anywhere they could go to talk to you or anything else? No, just thank you very much for uh, for your time, for the nice uh, interview. It was, was very fun. And uh, just uh, thank you to everybody for watching that. And if you're interested, the book is just uh, released now, so you can find it on Amazon or a Dynamite website. And uh, just follow me on my Instagram or Facebook, and uh, that's all. Thank you for uh, the support, for your support. Thanks a lot. I'll definitely be getting one of those. I wanted to make sure about that Remark edition because I have to call my shark store now and have them to order it because sure. that's a great deal. <laughs> it's a great deal. I'm super excited to have it too. It'll be my little Christmas gift to myself. So um, thank you so much, Lucia. I really appreciate thank it. You. And you guys be safe. Enjoy your holidays you out there. Yeah, if you sure. can. And uh, that's it, guys. I uh, appreciate everything. And we will see you later. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Oh, yeah.